thoughts? I, just more on your unhinged reading March. I don't March know what's reading. going on. It's March 12th now <laughs> as we're recording this. And yeah. so far I've read 15 books. Only mm-hmm. a couple of them have been novellas. Normally if I've read like a lot of books, like more than a book they a day. The... Yeah. It's usually because I'm reading several novellas. But there's only two. <laughs> And the thing, yeah. oh no, just kidding, three. Three of them are novellas. But I don't know, oh wait, I think it's three. I don't know, only a few. The point is, I don't know what's going on. How's your brain doing? Because there's I think a lot I of may information have, in there. I may have read myself into the beginnings of a slump, because I will uh-huh. admit, I That's... finished Yeah, I finished a book this morning. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, what's next? And nothing is piquing my interest. Nothing's jumped. That happened to me. Um, So, I mean, I've read uh, over 100 books this year so far. um, And March is by far my slowest month. And I mean, I think I've read, looking at my tracker, 14. Um, (laughs) Say it's my slowest month. Um, But, like, the time between books is taking longer. Because, like, for a part of March, Mm -hmm. I was watching, like, Dateline a lot or Bob's Burgers. And you can't, like, listen to audiobooks and watch Dateline. So, like it's one or the other um and then I just was like nothing was looking good and then I had so many arcs and I was like I don't a lot of the arcs have just been edging because they're anticipated and then I've been trying to like knock out the ones that I have like the least attachment to um mm-hmm. but even then like writing a review is still much like such a time commitment for me that I finish one I'm like I can't do another one right now um and then we're like reading a bunch for our our March uh, St. Patrick's Day episode. And I'm just like, oh my God, I'm kind of dying, but it's fine. Yeah, that's. I started another one for that. And there were some others that I was thinking about reading that I was like, you know what? No, I'm not going to read this. Mm-hmm. I just, they did not sound like a thing that I really wanted to read in this moment. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm like, I've got enough. There will be plenty of books to talk about. Um, but I, I started one today and I was like I can't do it and I watched a movie yeah exactly like there have been a few where I've like started the audiobooks and then immediately turn them off just knowing that I'm not going to pay attention it's not going to be fair to me or the audiobook um and then I just rereading is normally what I do in that situation um I haven't reread a lot this month it's been mostly new which I think may be the cause of my problems because rereading can kind of reset me um and I know that I'll love them because I've read um a few that have <laughs> been quite interesting this month that are kind of like middling in the rate like star, star rating um and then if you read too many like three or two stars in a row you kind of just lose the the pizzazz um but I did I did have a signature Instagram story rant this time so that that happened. Well, I've mostly been lucky. You have. You you seem to have like a lot of like good four or five stars. And I'm like, I'm jealous. I ha- I'm like low key trying to find. I'm like, can I read? Like, what <laughs> what can I read that is definitely gonna be a three star? Because yeah, it's like a little bit. Imbe- I didn't used to include my star ratings on my reading tracker on my stories. Yeah, I stopped. <laughs> well, I started because yeah. I, I, I yeah. don't normally but I was like this will be helpful and I like having it but the problem is seeing it all laid out when it's You're all like, four and five stars with the yeah. exception of one two star and one three star which like I know that about myself I rate yeah. like four stars is by far my most uh mm-hmm. common rating because mm-hmm. I'm easily pleased mm-hmm. but not really, easily well, super not impressed really, yeah yes yes that is the so it's mostly four you. stars but then i'm looking at it going i need to read something bad like i can't well, and that- read everything four and five stars <laughs> like i used to on my trackers add all the different star ratings and one it got freaking annoying because there were so many books and adding the stars i just got tired of it two i have enough authors following my page who i read their books and mm. They know I read them. That's cool. I don't want them to randomly stumble upon maybe a negative rating. Um, So sometimes I block them occasionally just for like a day while it's up if I'm like going on a rant or something. 
um because they don't need to see that mm-hmm. um i've started mm-hmm. like leaving the review link rather than the star rating um after every book in my tracker just if they're curious um because a lot of times like i want to qualify my rating um mm-hmm. you know that's fair yeah but but i mean you i don't it, write reviews the way that you do you have you've so. wrote, wrote god i can speak you've written a few though that i really liked but i guess I they were more write- for, like arcs i guess I do review arcs. Long. I'm behind mm-hmm. on posting to Goodreads. Like, I always, obviously, if I review something in yeah. the Galley, I have to write a review. I haven't posted any to Goodreads in a long time. Um, mm. But even when I do write reviews, they're not – like, you'll do an extensive yeah. review. A lot of times I, I just I don't. Also, I need to go in and do – I want to put, like, at least one sentence on content warnings for every book I've mm. read, but I'm so mm-hmm. behind. And it's I was so... going to do that today, but then I didn't want to. <laughs> it's <laughs> – so hard um because i'll say hannah just write a sentence you didn't like the book Mm -hmm. and then i just feel wronged and then i get to talking about it and i'm like i have to list all this and this and that and this and then it just snowballs i normally try to like structure it um in the beginning like saying this is my overall thought um go forth and prosper or read the entire review and that's your fault if you did um like I have some that are so long <laughs> and then um some people are like like they'll like stick it out and they'll comment because like they're the ones that have like the most traction because they're like one star reviews of like pretty popular ish books and pe- like I'll get either I cannot believe you took the time to write this you're crazy or thank you because I also felt that way so it's a you know whatever half and half but I try to limit myself, and then I just can't do it. But I'm better at limiting myself, lot. like, in going back and trying mm-hmm. to update from where I left off. I have the benefit of just having all of my one-sentence reviews from my monthly wrap-ups. That is That I've literally just been pulling that one sentence. <laughs> and then if I have, like, anything else quick to add or that I really feel like I want to point out in the review, I can add that. But I yeah. – Usually I have to have really strong feelings to write out anything more than mm-hmm. like a paragraph or two. It's just not my I, strength. Yeah. Reviews. Yeah. I think like neck alley reviews. I always like, I definitely write a lot. Um, but even then I'm like, you know, it's an early copy. People mm-hmm. want to know things and then I'll get comments on other reviews asking for things. So then I include them on future reviews and stuff. Um, but for like books that I like luck be a lady that I read for our March one, it was like a, two short paragraphs, like backlist stuff like that. I give myself a lot more grace, um, stuff that I'm not required to read or give a review for. Um, most of like the sense. Hathaway books, I just did emojis. <laughs> I was like, we have full episodes if you want to like look. I think I like linked to the the episodes and stuff. Um, yeah. But, well, that's the other, yeah. like, anybody who cares enough about my opinion is probably either mm-hmm. already following me on TikTok where I try to talk yeah. about at least a little bit about every book that I read because I do yeah. my, like, little weekly coffee chat yep. videos where I don't have a ton of time to talk about them, but I try to at least say mm-hmm. a little. And then yeah. we have this where we this. talk about anything <laughs> we recommend anyway. So if you really care exactly. about my opinion, you can just listen to the podcast. Otherwise, yeah. I don't know, ask me if you're like really super yeah. curious about a book. But otherwise, I just cannot yeah. write reviews the way that you do. Alas, because it, being a book reviewer would be such a great <laughs> job if I were good at writing reviews. I'm good at reading them and fun. I'm good at having opinions. I think I'm though, just not I good would at feel so those opinions. Yeah, I would feel so much pressure though if I was like a legit like getting paid or like at like part of a you know an eight whatever re- library journal publication yeah. um because I can be scathing and trust that those reviews probably won't you know make it farther than like my little scope but if you're like part of a publication I have too strong of feelings I think to write a moderate <laughs> review for a book that I've hated and I feel that I would encounter <laughs> more books that aren't my jazz that way. You've just got to work um, at like um, – I mean, is I it could do it. that the reviews are anonymous? Yeah. That is true. Um, just I just the one where the reviews are all done anonymously. <laughs> like, because I, I try – I think some of them you're like – you're assigned um, the books that you review. 
And at least with NetGalley, I can choose the blood oath that I enter. Um, it, so there's some insight as to why I chose it. And even then, I like steer myself into really wrong direction sometimes. Um, but yeah, it's something to think about. Um, but even then, Goodreads is my my safe space. <laughs> it's a good time over there. <laughs> Okay, well. Well, speaking of reviews. Yeah. It's TBR Tuesday. TBR Tuesday. <laughs> Romance, Romance TBR. TBR. <laughs> Notably less bantery and fun than normal. And yeah, much more it's, like. Okay. Daylight Savings is a salty, oh. sneaky bitch. <laughs> I ate I dinner totally at 8 o'clock. I, I was so angry I, when I woke up. I was like, oh. <gasps> Didn't realize until <laughs> – so I stayed up reading. Me too. And I didn't yeah. think I had read for that long because I couldn't even finish yeah. the novella that Wait, I was Wait, you were so right. It. And I looked at the I clock and I was like, oh, my God, I stayed up until 3 a.m. How did I You're do so right. that? Mm-hmm. And then I went to sleep oh. and then I woke up and I was like, holy cow, how did I sleep until noon? Like, yes, I was it, tired, this is but I don't the, remember the exact that, night that tired. I had. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've lived parallel lives i love that for us i was so confused i was so disoriented i went downstairs and then i was more confused and disoriented because our oven and microwave clocks were set to an hour earlier and i yeah. was like huh and it took my brain so long to comprehend and then i got on instagram and penguin teen had posted a thing that was oh. like hey you didn't stay up until 2 a.m. reading. You stayed up until 1 a.m. Happy Daylight Savings. And I was like, oh, my God. That's such a great point because I re- like I knew when I woke up that it was Daylight Savings. I did not realize that I was awake for the change to happen. That makes mm-hmm. a lot of sense. Damn. Yeah, no. I realized that after I saw that because yeah. I realized when yeah. I saw the clocks that it had been Daylight Saving, but I didn't realize until I saw the Penguin Teen thing that I was like, oh. Yeah, I didn't do stay it. up until 3 a.m., but I did. The entire day Whoops. has just felt off. Everything is wrong. It is. I despise I, this. My dog, she's got no clue what time it is. She's like, she doesn't know when to bark for food. <laughs> like, same. I don't want to bark for food either. That's why we ate at 8 p.m. We were like, wait, it's it was dinner time a long time ago. But it didn't feel like it in our soul souls no i suppose and i keep forgetting and then i looked at like the weather and i was like oh sunset isn't till like yeah 7 30 that's weird it's been setting way earlier later and it took an embarrassingly mm-hmm. long amount of time to be like oh it's yeah that's why we and, changed yep and it's been snowy still and i'm just over it i don't want that in my life right now i want like leggings and a sweatshirt i don't want static and winter jackets well i also want leggings and a sweatshirt but alas it was like 80 degrees today so. okay i don't quite want that we can't all <laughs> get what we want we can't <laughs> you okay can't always get mm-hmm. what you want mm-hmm. anyway <laughs> who are um, we if we're not we need to start talking about these books because <laughs> once again this is gonna be a bonkers long episode i'm just gonna say yeah. it now yeah 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 um you you start to to the point that we opened with (laughs) i've read (laughs) at this juncture the 12th day of the month 15 books (laughs) actually 16 if i include the one that i finished in february that wasn't on that tbr tuesday episode so let's start there with a wicked game i finished one as well yep a wicked game, uh, a flame. This way, I will say I'm not going to talk about every single book that I read because there's yes, a, a, at least one that I didn't really like, and a, one was Married by Morning, which our episode is already out, and there's another one that'll be included in next week's or uh, Friday's episode. So, mm-hmm. yep, yep, yep. At least I don't have to talk about every single one of these books. Anyway, A Wicked Game by Kate Bateman. <gasps> you were a flame in the Panda Express. I was. Drive-thru. I was. I was a flame <laughs> stirring a pot of chicken adobo at my mm-hmm. stove. Mm-hmm. 
it was not an exaggeration either i was listening to the final sex scene through my airpods and i had just fully like zoned out and was sitting there (laughs) stirring chicken listening to her ride him yeehaw is what i have for you like that book I said it before, and I had started it on a hot girl walk. It was great. But I didn't have the audio, so I was just, like, walking and reading, which is mildly dangerous. Um, oh, but God. I started <laughs> I started um, a little concerned because I thought there – because, like, he was, like, going for revenge on this map maker and turns out, mm. bum, 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 she's the map maker, and hence the reason why he was locked up on an island and tortured. Um, so he had yeah. some – um vendettas to dole out and then he finds out it was her and it was a trick map for was it the french or something Mm -hmm. um and he wasn't supposed like they used it but they weren't supposed to use it and then he couldn't be angry and then he just kind of went into being in love with her and it was like okay fine i'll just marry her and they did really skip over the revenge thing yeah it was just i'll just spend the rest of the book trying to get her to realize she's in love with me because we've been amicable enemy oh my god amicable and mm, amicable enemies for so long that she will not trust her own heart i do respect it's a very similar uh yeah uh uh, premise i get like it's not a similar premise but the idea is very similar to the duke who didn't like courtney milan in that the entire like hero's goal in that book is Mm -hmm. she won't marry me unless she realizes herself that she's the ideal woman for me so i can't propose i have to just try to convince her subtly that we're in love like (laughs) same it's same with um with how to be a wallflower by eloisa james he he realizes really early on that he's not gonna marry the cow woman um, who he thought he could have a life with in America. I wish and she then from would like, get her own book. I hope she will. She, Frederica, she was, she's a babe. Moo moo. Um, like he realized like 30% in that he just wasn't going to do that and then pivoted directly into her, into Cleo's life and was like, okay, I'm here. <laughs> this is going to happen. And it's like not a creepy way because it can sound like a creepy, like I'm going to make her love me and I'm going to like, spend all my time but it's like a hot way <laughs> again fiction it only works in like dual pov when yeah. you're inside the yeah. guy's brain and you yeah. know it's like oh he's in love and not like oh yeah, yeah. and that it's like oh this works for me because he's straight up like without any encouragement from this woman after meeting her like a couple of times yeah. just decided hang on i have to write i have to write to my man of business in america <laughs> And sell all of my holdings mm-hmm. there because I'm actually going to be living in England from yep. now on. Yep. And he – and he because he knew that she didn't want to move. So he did – that wasn't an issue. <laughs> he was just like, I love you and I don't He's care. Facts. Like, Yeah. And I mean, in his head, you knew he loved two things, coffee and Cleo. And like the breakfast that they had where he ate like – was it like sardines or something? Or like capers. Oh, capers? yeah. Capers? Are those fish? I don't know. He had some – every morning, he, yeah, he Thanks. ate, like, capers and toast and coffee. And then he was like, I love you more than capers. And then it was a whole thing. So there's that. There is that. It was a great book. I didn't read it this month or in the past couple of weeks. No. I did Me read either. it I remember game. that one, actually. Yeah. I know. Look at you. You remember mm-hmm. more than I do. I, right? Um, right? I'm oh, impressed. Anyway, a wicked game. I don't know if I prefer it to a daring pursuit because it's been so long since I've read a daring pursuit. Yeah. I'm gonna have to reread a daring pursuit to determine. But I will say, Harry and Morgan are perhaps my ideal relationship dynamic. Yeah. Which is number one: the are they gonna fight or are they gonna fuck? Yeah. Dynamic, automatically yes. my favorite. Yeah. You can look. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know how like if you look back on your favorite uh like media oh, absolutely. And relationships a, from childhood yes yes yeah yes. so yeah. yeah no i get it i was a pride and prejudice girly first and mm-hmm. foremost and i was a much ado about nothing girly which explains a lot about who i am as a person mm-hmm. specifically much ado about nothing um it also explains why i think that flirting is only flirting if it's like banter and a little bit mean yeah yeah 
So I agree. Morgan and Harrogate, <laughs> uh, it, it, they, they, <laughs> they're so dumb. They just want to kiss so badly, but the only they reason do. they can think as an excuse is if they come up <laughs> with to stupid bet. beds. The premise for so it too. Hot. She was like, "He loves to annoy me so much that I'm going to bet him, him that alive. he won't." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so like, because he was going off to war, so she bets him that um, if he stays alive, she'll like give him three favors or three kisses um, if he comes back. She was like, "I like I love him, like I like him, I like bantering with him, so he needs to stay alive. Like I don't want him dead. So if I bet him that he'll stay alive." <laughs> I was like, go for it. It's impeccable that logic is power. what it is. And then not only did he pull up and eventually demand his three kisses, he said, I never mm-hmm. said where I was Where? Uh, a favorite micro trope. Can I kiss you? What are you doing with your th- shoulders between my thighs? I never said where. Mm. God, it's so good. The other notable thing it about is. this one, which you called early on, is that I, I um, am really picky about grand gestures. Specifically, mm-hmm. I... With some exceptions, because I think that a public grand gesture can be done well and yeah. be necessary. However, most of the time, I despise public grand gestures. They make me deeply uncomfortable. I'm mm-hmm. immediately in the shoes of some random spectator who's like, <laughs> why are you doing this to us? Go find yeah. a room somewhere. I literally, I just watched, the movie that I watched today was Belle. Mm. The one about the... Mm-hmm. um. Dido Elizabeth Bell, the black yeah. woman in the Georgian painting. Uh, and at the end, when they finally kiss, because it's a period romance. Yeah. Uh, when they finally kiss, it's like they're doing their dramatic love declarations of marriage and such on the street, like on the sidewalk. And so he like kisses her passionately and like picks her up. And there are people walking by the whole time. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. they do like a wide shot and like a couple of people have to awkwardly like walk around <laughs> them. And then the lady like turns around and looks back at them. And I was like, yeah. Do you know how uncomfortable I would be if I was trying to just mind my business walking to like the shops or something? And there's a couple making out on the street i'd be like pardon me we're in georgian england we don't do pda anyway the thing that i like Uh, about this book is that number one it wasn't a public grand gesture and number two it was grand but it was very personal and specific it wasn't just like i'm gonna declare in front of everyone Mm -hmm. that i love you because that's dumb Instead, he was like, what if I take this thing that's very specific and personal to the both of us and I make it happen? Also, she had already been like, oh my gosh, you're so right. He's been doing all these little things to like that yeah. all say so that she he was loves already me there. and he's been doing it for years. Yeah. yeah, Which I am the biggest proponent of. Yes. Mm. That mm. that entire series that happened in every book, it they all have minimal to like no breakups. This one was a, a crazed like – I do, 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 do. A Frenchman, a pirate. Yes. French, uh, Frenchman. Um, I respect so like, like Veggie Tales. The French are yeah. always the villains. <laughs> Sorry if you're French and listening to this. <laughs> no, I, I mean it makes sense. England was at war with Napoleon. Yeah. Yeah. So of course yeah. the French are the. Vi- I'm not sorry. Have you ever watched <laughs> Veggie Tales? The villains are always played by the French peas. I did not grow up watching the Veggie Tales. Um, <gasps> Alas, <laughs> I've watched well, them sometimes. Fine. No, it's fine. Yeah. I like no. the dragon tails. <laughs> Get out of here! Hey, they were good. Not relevant. D- did boy dragon boy tails boy. have a a boy band that released albums? No, no they did Veggie not. Veggie Tales did. <laughs> I did not know that the boy band was called Boys in the Sink. <laughs> <laughs> and they just, had at least one album, and I still know too many of the words to too many of the songs. Uh, Sandry tweeted on Twitter today, the boys in motion from Raven. That's a Raven. Um, and that was a great time watching. So That's a Raven had a lovely boy band. Um, you're not familiar with that, are you? Or are nope. you? Are you? We, no. We are the boys in motion. We can. I didn't okay. watch. Well, was that on Disney? Un- that was Disney, yeah. Okay, I didn't watch a ton of those kind of shows growing mm. up, like Disney. I watched a lot of them. Mm-hmm. It was more relatable. Movie kid. I did anyway, watch a lot of those too. <laughs> well, wait, here we are. 
A that. wicked game. Mm. Recommend. Yes. Um, the last one that I had in February was Aphrodite and the Duke, um, which you oh, yeah. read and you talked about mm-hmm. in one of our episodes. Um, and you were right. Like the third act was a lot to handle, but I loved the writing. Cause I think, did you, um, cause it was first person, which was an interesting time for a historical um, and yeah. I think you had noted that in our episode. Um, but I thought I thought yeah. it was really funny and I really liked it. The the writing style. I didn't know how I would like first person. Um, it was really fun. And I and I knew the third act was coming, so like it was it was very obvious. Um, so I wasn't very angry. I was just kinda like, I want them to be happy again. So please let's just get there. Uh and there wasn't there wasn't an epilogue. Um, and I, I need one, so book two here i come um but i loved it the the audiobook was really good that's Um, fair i remember that was mm -hmm. one that most i mean i had a lot of thoughts about it back when i read it and now it's Mm -hmm. i all yeah my brain took that information and ejected it so presumably i talked about it it some point it was such an oddly structured book but i like it was an odd structure it was because they were uh it was a second chance and he they were like gonna get engaged and then he just never um showed up and so he ended up marrying um someone else and you don't know why she's pissed off at him it's like a few years like three ish years later and um she is now again on the marriage mart hosting a ball and then he's back in town his wife has died and you think it's gonna be this whole thing of them getting together but they get together so fast Mm-hmm. Like once he explains what happened, she's like, "Oh, bet, okay, cool, let's <laughs> let's make out, you know." And then they they do, <laughs> and then they get married, <laughs> and then it's just them being married, and because he has the, I think he had a daughter. The his wife had a daughter, um, yeah, and everyone thinks the daughter is his because of shenanigans, um, and so there's like some bonding there. It was cute. And then you get into the whole third act with his uh, terrible relations and such. But I thought it was just such an odd way to structure it in a really enjoyable way. That's fair. The one thing I do remember is that I had the arc of it and I started it. Yes. And I didn't – Yeah. I couldn't get past like the first I remember that, yeah. The the dialogue stuck out to me as being very odd. And so that one was one that I switched to audio. To audio. Yep. It was still there were like a couple of times where I was like, "This is kind of odd dialogue," but mm-hmm. for the most part, the audiobook solved mm-hmm. that, which I yeah, that's happened multiple I, times. We're switching to yeah. audio makes weird dialogue work for me. Yeah, I I don't think I noticed anything. Um, there were a few POVs that I didn't expect. I was kind of like, "Why are we having the brothers yeah, that was POV?" Weird one for me. And that was someone else, I like, remember. I think that's one of the things that I took a little bit of an issue with. And again, I really – I did like that book, but one of the things was that I don't think head hopping works in first person. No, No, it was odd. You can't have more than two POVs. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, and in this one, they were so random. It wasn't even like you had four POVs strictly. Yeah, it was just like in a consistent get another person. Yeah, at a consistent interval, um, it was just occasionally, and I had a hard time via audiobook knowing when it was switched to like her brother and not because they had different narrators for them, which I just it was just such an it it surprised me when they would pop up and I was like, what are we doing here? Because we didn't learn too much yeah. from those outside POVs that really influence the plot or anything. No, I think we could have done without those. But I do think it was good. Overall, was this is one that like yeah. the author wasn't a debut, but I think it was her first historical. Mm-hmm. And I look forward to her writing more. Yeah, I'm holding out on requesting the art for book two because I just want the audiobook. Um, so whenever yeah, that's okay. available, I am raring to go because it's her and the doctor. Um, that's gonna be so good. Um, okay, so yeah, that was that was that one. Your next one. Uh, I read How to Marry a Marble Marquis by uh, oh boy. C. M. N- Nascosta. Is that how you say her name? I don't know. Sh- sure. 
it's a paranormal know. historical it's part of a mm-hmm. collection i guess that's like the Is it monsters. monsters in love i don't know if that's what it's called i don't know they're I... all around they're all centered around the monsters ball oh um, okay so that's a different okay cool but they're like How all different authors mm-hmm. um it was great um <laughs> I mean, yeah. it, it's to be clear, it's an erotic novella. I think it's a novella. Yeah. Um, about, about yeah. a marble marquee, like he's a gargoyle. Um, mm-hmm. it, he, it, she is, you know, <laughs> and she needs to marry well. She's done so terribly at the season that the queen is like, <laughs> "Hey, your season's a failure. You have to go attend the the monsters' ball to find a monster husband." And she's like, dang, I really, really need to marry Rich. So her Same. uncle is like, hey, I got you. Um, this guy will help you. The Marquis of whatever. Beautiful. And she's expecting like an old man. And instead she gets a young, hot gargoyle. Well, actually, I think um, she, she knew he was a gargoyle because she held tea in the middle of the night but, for him. But Gargoyles but are the young nocturnal. And hot. <laughs> but the young gotcha. and hot was a surprise. Um <laughs> The thing about gargoyles, <laughs> if you didn't know, uh, mm. <laughs> is that they are, they're not just nocturnal, they actually uh, turn into stone when the sun is out. Um, Dare I they say like, they're hard? Nice. Well, so they, <laughs> on that note, there is a little, um, there's a, a tad bit of sleep play, if you will. Oh, yeah. I I learned the term for that. Isn't it like somnophilia? Som. Yeah, I had no clue what that was. Um, now I do. I don't know why I do. Anyway, <laughs> um, fanfic. <laughs> it was probably fanfic. Um, that's the cause for most of my knowledge, if I'm being honest. Uh, anyway, the- there is a little bit of that. Except in this case, he's not just asleep; he is turned to he stone. But the interesting stone. thing is that he can. can, can he's feel? like. Yeah, but only oh. right after they fall asleep and right as they're waking up, there's, like, a really short period of time where he's, like, paralyzed, but he can, like, sense things and feel uh-huh. things. Yeah. Anyway, great. That's the great point news. is, she's like, I need your help tutoring me to catch a monster husband. And he's like, that's because he does. never plans on getting married. It's a whole thing. Mm-hmm. But yeah. then he's like, I also have to give you lessons in pleasure for romance reasons. Um, How generous. Obviously. Really? And so then they're just like fucking all over the place at his estate. But she's being really petty about it. And every time she's doing something to him, she's like, how do you think a, an orc would like, would, would an orc want me to do such and such different? Like constantly reminding oh. him that she's going to go marry oh, someone God. else. And oh, he's like pissed that. about it. Um, and then she has to go to the monster ball. Anyway, it was not super long. He was a gargoyle. They had sex all I over the place. I bet he was super long. Um, he was. He has a knot also, which was oh. a fun little mm-hmm. twist. A naughty twist. Nice. Thank that you. That was bad, but nice. I know, but it's nice. Yeah. So, um, um, in, a a, in a shocking turn of events, I also started a an orc novella from CM Nacosta. So in a sleepy haze on, was it like Thursday or Friday morning, um, I got an email from – I ha- I signed up for these newsletters. It was like 13 Valentines from 13 monster writers or something. Um, And I was like, why not? I like emails. Um, And then it told me to buy Monsters in Love for 99 cents. And how could I refuse? Um, I love a good anthology. And the first one is the historical. How could I refuse? (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) It's okay. Was that a reference? It was. (laughs) <laughs> to Preminger nice. from Barbie's Princess and the Popper. <laughs> the best of the Barbie movies. Excuse me, Swan Lake begs to differ. Nope, it's easily uh, the Princess and the Popper. Oh I, my god, no. I actually oh, no. won't be taking any criticism on that. Okay, Swan Lake is are... a great movie, but it's no Princess and the Popper. We're going to do the poll, okay, uh, on okay. Spotify. If you're listening to this on Spotify, I, we need a chance to use it. Um, That's true. We'll do that. We can even say just ask your favorite Barbie movie, so you can write in your response too. Um, so that one, the monster one, it's an orc, and she is like the head um, housekeeper, and 
his like valet has to go for some reason and so she's now acting as his valet also as well as like that housekeeper um he right um he's like a very quiet reserved orc i suppose um and and she's like she's very attracted to him she loves thinking about him at night um he doesn't he hasn't really shown like much outward like lust or anything um she finds a dirty uh like two dirty books in his office and she's like oh these must be here as a mistake he could never that's just so not him um so she looks into them and they're all orcs as he is um and so she's like wow that's hot i'm gonna go you know get myself off and then she accidentally left the books on his desk and then she goes back to get them she's like that's so embarrassing they're gone i wonder who found them um i haven't gotten farther than that but it's been a great time so far um the most notable thing that i simply have to mention is that in this world orcs have such large uh i don't it's penises i want to say peni um appendages that they that they have to be strapped down they like they have to be strapped around one thigh he he uh, lean yeah well like the like there's a strap that goes around so like oh dear God. the appendage is like shift he he goes to the left if you were curious um and then the valet dresses has to, to the like left. dresses up, there we are um i will um and then they have to like strap it down because it's so ugh, virile and excitable i don't I haven't we haven't encountered um her actively engaging with it and she's like I will like I will help him I am nothing but his loyal servant um so yeah when I it's discovered I. that they had <laughs> they had to be strapped down I thought that was a fun little nugget of <laughs> knowledge in my brain now so. one of the things that stops me from enjoying monster romance as much as others Mm -hmm. <laughs> is that I get a little afraid every time there's a mention of, like, an abnormally large yeah. penis. Because, like, yeah. I already don't love the, the like, the trend, I guess, in romance yeah. where they're, their dicks are always so big and it's always like, yeah. oh, you look no I'm like, it's a little eye roll, but also a little, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's just not accurate, like, it yeah. also just doesn't sound like a good time to me, and not yeah. everybody wants a giant dick. But so when it's, like, that big, or, like, fucking yeah. uh, the rogue's rules of, for seduction, where she's like, oh, the head of his penis is almost is as big plum. as a plum. And I was like, oh, ow, we, we had, what do we you had mean? A discussion. We were like, okay, it's not a genetically engineered plum at that time. So, like, not as big as our plums. But then there but was also the line where – there was also the line where he couldn't get his hand around it. He's like – he was so – he was, like, so thick that he could barely wrap his fingers fully around. And I'm like, that man, you know he has, like, large hands. And I was like, if he can little. barely control it, what's going on? So it stops yeah. me from really loving a lot of ro uh, monster romances mm. because they're always like, oh, well, they are way bigger than humans. And I'm like, that just doesn't – it doesn't yeah. sound like a good time to me. To each their own. Yeah. Some people like that, I guess. And you know what? No shade. Good for y'all. I would simply not be taking an orc's schlong <laughs> if it has if it's so big it has to be strapped to his thigh. <laughs> Dick down by an orc schlong in Dallas. <laughs> Uh, won't be Caroline. <laughs> it's like the ju the jury's still out on me. <laughs> it's like passion by Lisa Valdez. Yeah. I was like, this doesn't cervix sound like a good bang, time. Yeah. I don't want you yeah. to be breaching my cervix. See that that's even more alarming than you know just a gigantic dick. The the uh, cervix that just seems like not pleasant. Ugh. Um. Well, here we are. We're back. Uh, we yeah. both read Bookshop Cinderella by Laura Lee Girk, so we can talk about that. Um, what a fun time. 
she's all that yeah I, but make I'm, it historical I, I thought it was delightful it really was i mean um standard disclaimer it's a forever mm-hmm. book mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um it, but i i loved it it was it did some really interesting things with how it approached uh the she's all that trope or i suppose my fair lady like in a, and then there's before that whatever in my cultural reference it's she's all that um and it really felt like the movie and i had a very good time because i that's one of my favorite like milestone movies in my life Mm. um and they exposed the bet early so it's not a it's not like a content like a source of contention down the road Mm -hmm. which was really nice and i loved you you we were talking about it and you were like i just love how she accepted it because she, it was like out of pettiness like yeah i can do it i um, respect so much like yeah. i am motivated out of spite spite is Same. my primary motivation that's why i write like, such long reviews <laughs> that's valid so like <laughs> i feel like laura lee gurky gets that so she yeah. gave me this heroine who like yeah there were other motivating things and yeah she was gonna turn him down but then extenuating circumstances yeah. meant she had to yeah. go along with it but on multiple occasions he goaded her by being like, don't yeah. you want to prove these slimy little boys wrong? And she was like, facts, I sure boy. do. And then, <laughs> he didn't say that, but they were slimy. And then, like, those bitches from school showed up and she was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. this is kind of fun. And then at the end, mm-hmm. she was like, no, I can't be with him. It'll be too hard. And then speaking of slimy little boys, the Duchess. we're not supposed to be talking about spoilers. It's TBR Tuesday, but. Fuck. The point is that she's motivated by spite. Yeah. And I not all the time, the, but on several occasions, and I respect it. There to not say any spoilers, there was a point where I was like, what's gonna happen? And her response to the thing that happened was wonderful. And <laughs> Anna, that's dare I say it. <laughs> I'm not trying to spoil it. A thing <laughs> happened and her response to the thing was excellent. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it without giving a spoiler. So just let's just say she's my petty queen and okay. <laughs> I enjoyed her response. Um, yeah. There is a point vague. at which I don't know if this is what you're talking about because you were so vague that not even I know and I've read the book. But I will say there's a point where she has convinced herself of something. Yeah, that's the point because then – Okay. And somebody else tells her she can't do the thing and that immediately turns her around. And she goes, you know what? Actually, I can. Yes. So that that was – So so now you have to read the book to know what I was talking about and what else she was talking about. (laughs) (laughs) They were both two sides of the same coin. For those of you um, who don't know this book, it is She's All... I mean, it is My Fair Lady, you're right, but, like, it's specifically yeah. She's All That and yeah. that the hero literally yeah. accepts a bet to, like, turn yes. her into the belle of the ball. And yeah. then what? Falls in love with her himself. Who knew? Who could have guessed? I say mm. lovingly because it was just delightful every step of the way. Mm. Also, she's living my dream. He, like, puts her up in this fancy hotel and, like, pays for just- all of her stuff. That's really what I want in life, right? Yeah. She just goes and looks at, like, art, visits museums and stuff in her free time. Mm -hmm. This is, once again, me telling you to read Along Came a Lady by Christy Caldwell. It's the same. It's not a bet. She works for his father, and his father pays her to go corral him. But hot coal miner named Rafe, just saying. A very fun third act. It was lovely. My Fair Lady stuff is my catnip. Um I really do have a fondness. So that one's not out. Is it like July or something? It is June Uh, 20th. Yeah. 2023. So put it on your tabs. Um, (laughs) (laughs) It's a Dan in real life quote. Um, What you you got next? We have talked Um, so long. Jesus. Don't worry about it. I read a novella. So I've been reading through. There's a series that is almost entirely on KU uh, called Regency in Color. And it's another like mm. s- series where all the novellas are written by different authors. Um, mm-hmm. 
And I have been kind of reading them sporadically, mixing them in, mm-hmm. because I have been determined to find one that I like. So far, the ones that I had read, I didn't really vibe with. They were like, meh, three stars. Yeah. Either like really forgettable or they just like ran into problems that I have a lot with novellas if I'm trying to do too much. Um, yep. Or like yep, not yep. having enough time to tell the story that they're trying to tell. And I finally found one that I liked. Ooh. And it was so cute. And it was called The 40 Day Governess. Uh, by Mary Farmer. Uh, mm, so mm-hmm. basically, the hero has been staying in, I believe they're in like the West Indies, gotcha. maybe. Um, because his brother went there and married a woman there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it, they died. Uh, so he is now the father figure, the what a the guardian of the two little girls. Nice. And they are little hellions. And he's been there for a couple of months, like, selling the land and dealing with things. Um, And the day before they're set to leave, their governess quits and basically is like, Mm. I literally can't take it anymore. These girls are the worst. Um, Nice. And so he's like, oh, no, I don't have a governess for this 40-day journey back. And the guy that he's, like, kind of friends been staying with has this housekeeper who has a strange resemblance to him and so basically everybody knows that she's his daughter but she's black so she's like illegitimate and he can't like recognize that she's his daughter so she's like his housekeeper and he basically is like yeah she'll be the governess (laughs) she'll go and she's like i sure don't want to and he's like well you're gonna go be the governess just for the journey over and then you can go make a new life as a housekeeper somewhere in england because i'm getting married and i haven't told her about you whoa yeah he it's one of those things where he's like trying to be nice and you can tell that he cares in his own way but you're like my guy this is not it anyway so she's like fine basically they're gonna go oh and the hero meanwhile he's he never expected to inherit so he's a mess uh, he, he's not trained for this at all. He's, like, not an aristocrat, basically. Um, but he needs a wife really badly, and they find out there's this, like, young widow mm. who's a lady that's going to be on this trip. So he's g- decided that he's going to try to marry her, and she wants to get in good with her to become potentially her housekeeper. So they agree to, like, help each other Gotcha. while they're on this voyage like talk each other up to her um and they fall in love obviously and nice. it's just like it, it's them with the kids um they're oh, like there's all this drama with a storm on the ship and like she's mm-hmm. the only capable one it's um it's just adorable it's very cute it sounds lovely they don't try to do too much it almost all of it takes place on this boat there's not a crazy third act. Like, there's a brief misunderstanding, but it's rectified pretty much immediately, and then you're just happy. It was just a cute little good time. I love a good boatmance. Uh, for me, I read Summer Reading by Jen McKinley. Uh, it's from Berkeley. That was an arc, and it comes out in May. Um, so again, not too much, but he is a, a hot library director. And mm. she is a hot chef. Um, currently, she's unemployed, but then she takes up catering, which I have a soft spot for. I catered for two summers. Um, and she's dyslexic, so she does not like to read um, and has a lot of past history with people like shaming her and thinking she's not smart. And meanwhile, all of the coping mechanisms she's had to develop since like middle school – um have made her just incredibly smart um as well as like an incredibly great uh kitchen manager but she was let or she quit after um she was passed over for promotion um in part due to the guy's assumption that she just wasn't smart enough to handle a kitchen um and so him being a librarian director um was a little it was a source of she was nervous to tell him that she wasn't a reader and then all this stuff uh, but it was really cute I can like it's one of those books where I think the rating on Goodreads will be like 3.6 you know uh, that's sometimes the sweet spot because it really worked for me the third act kind of got a little bit out there um, I don't care he was a hot librarian and he read her a book and 
during the sex scene? What did he do? I'm going to leave it to your imagination until you guys read it. I had a really great time. And she had a son – or she did not have a son. She had a little brother who she was babysitting for the summer. And, I mean, he was 14, so, like, not little, little. But I love those sibling dynamics, too. So – I recommend it. It was a perfect summer read. Um, Closer to summer than beach read. (laughs) You know, like that one's tangentially. This one, again, is maybe not like – that's not the key part of it, but it gave me those summer vibes. Um, It was like the Cape Cod. um, The – what's it called? Not uh, – Martha's Vineyard. um, And a a fantasy of mine is getting to go to the Cape and or somewhere around there and just eat crab. So <laughs> it worked for me. Uh, yeah. So that, that's well, speaking, I guess, of <laughs> summer. I read Midsummer Moon by <laughs> Laura Kinsale, which yeah. I talked about last episode. Yeah. This book is so absurd. I say that lovingly. I thought it was a great book. <laughs> um <laughs> It does have yeah. some bad review. This book is number one from 1987, and number two, a lot of it is playing with, like, consent and what it means to consent. Yeah. And I had a really interesting discussion in my DMs with Alexandra Vasti, um, mm-hmm. the author, um, where we talked a little bit about, like, the what Laura Kinsale is doing with consent in this book, because it starts with a bang of... The the heroine is, like, clearly ni- uh, neurodivergent. Mm-hmm. She's um, a brilliant, like, scientist inventor, but she's been, like, raised by this eccentric uncle to be super scattered. Um, I mean, to be super sheltered. She is very scattered. Um, not great with, like, social cues, reading other people. Mm-hmm. So she's kind of all over the place, super into her work. Has no knowledge of really, like, the outside world, let alone, like, interpersonal relations or her own body. So she literally has no concept of, like, sex or, like, what that means in a relationship or, like, being taken advantage of. Any of this. And he, meanwhile, is a duke. Mm -hmm. And he's Mm -hmm. very honorable and buttoned up and he would never, ever take it. Like, he's actually very miffed that she's, like, living alone with these elderly servants and has Mm -hmm. no protector or anything. And he's very upset about this. And then he accidentally gets dosed (laughs) with an aphrodisiac. And he's we're talking about and that it's last not time. just that he's horny; it's that he's high out of his mind, and you can see it change in the writing, where all of a sudden he's like oh, kind no. of drifting in the clouds. It, like he literally is not in his right mind. So they end up banging it out a couple of times because she's like, "This feels good to me." Um, and then when he comes down from that, he's like, "Oh no, there was something in the salt," and then immediately tries to marry Dramatic her, but she doesn't singing. want to marry him. Yeah. Well, but also her life is in danger because the French are after her invention, which is what he's come the here French, to get. Guys. So he's all the French, the villains. So <laughs> aren't they always? So he's already come thinking that Merlin is a man to take this man yeah. and the invention, which is basically a walkie-talkie to safety. But then he gets there and it's this young woman with a hedgehog in her pocket and chaos in her life. And he's like, oh, no. And then he sleeps with her <laughs> against his will. <laughs> A hedgehog in her pocket and chaos in her life. <laughs> Me too, queen. But like, um, <laughs> so he had already come to take this person away to protect them because the person who delivered him the message about this invention was literally stabbed. So he's like, I have to save you. So he already is trying to get her, but then he sleeps with her. And so he shows up the next day um, intending to marry her. But while she was out trying to like carry out this experiment, her house was ransacked. Because somebody was after her. So he's like, number one, Mm -hmm. we have to get married. Number two, you have to come live with me. And she's like, I don't want to marry you. And it's actually a very, like, emotional thing. It's because he's so upset being worried about her that he breaks her kite that she was using for the experiment. And she, like, can't Mm -hmm. get past this because she's like, why would you do that? Like, Mm -hmm. and he's like, it's just a kite. Why do you care? And to her, that was, like, her thing that she was working on for her flying machine. So it's a really interesting, like... I find it fascinating the way Kinsale sets up these two people who are, like, opposed in any – they're, like, diametrically opposed because the entire thing – he is very afraid of losing her. Like, Mm -hmm. he is deeply, deeply, deeply afraid of heights. Has a really intense phobia of it. 
and she's building a flying machine and that's the thing that like she oh. cares about in this world more than anything else oh that'll so he's do determined it. to keep yep. her from flying this flying machine because yep. he's convinced it's gonna kill her and she doesn't well and he never tells anyone about his fear of heights so she already mm-hmm. doesn't understand what his thing is and she do, she like has no concept mm-hmm. of understanding what his deal is and why yeah. he's so upset so they are just like at odds the entire time I also love, she won't I marry him yeah. which he's mad about because he is he's like importuned her honor whatever yeah. and is like i yeah. need to marry you but also he's obsessed with her and she doesn't want to give up her legal personhood because if she marries him he could force her to stop working on her flying machine yeah So there's a lot going on. There are some, like, one-star reviews of people being mad at the hero for, like, essaying her. And uh, this may be an unpopular opinion, but I don't think it really counts if he also was drugged. Yeah, I think it would be they were both taken advantage of rather than, Right, like, like it was a really unfortunate happenstance. Yes, yeah. But neither of them was in their mind like neither of them were able to give consent yeah damn so it was weird this one also has a giant cast of characters and multiple side romances Mm. and they're all delightful it's so fun and there's the hedgehog which i discussed Mm -hmm. at length last time the narrator, okay. Nicholas Bolton, does a really good job. Especially, he does, like, really distinct voices for every character. So even though there's a big cast of characters, you never get confused who's who. I love that. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a really fun, his, the hero's brother um, is a really interesting, he's divorced, and his wife is also there. Wait, is, are and do she's they... French, I think, actually. <laughs> what? I was going to say, they do get they, back um... together. Oh, okay, cool. I do love that. Um, but there's a lot of drama and he's all mad at his brother because he's so perfect but the, he, the, he, the brother is mad at the hero because he's always so perfect and upstanding and like gotcha. shady or like shades him for doing these things but then mm-hmm. he's like you took advantage of her and so he's all mad at him the whole time nice there are three separate kidnappings there's <laughs> three separate kidnappings the aphrodisiac there's a brief bout of amnesia um, which is another no, thing that people that read everything. the book low were mad about. Um, there's I he has to rescue amnesia. her from a tower at the end, which involves like scaling a cliff ba- or like climbing along nice. a cliff. Yeah. Um, they do end up flying the flying machine out of a bombed built. Like it's there's like oh. fire whatchamacallit nice. gunpowder in the building and it's blowing up there is just a lot happening here and i had wow. such a good time yeah it did get a little bit annoying by the end yeah it got a little annoying at the end when they were like still he he yeah. does some shady things that are not cool and she is really insistent on not marry. so by the end you're kind of like come on you're just like get yeah you're like we've gotten this far like let's just get it together up and go it's also long because yeah. it's from 1987 but yeah god if i didn't have yeah. a great time okay i on talked for a long journey. time about it but i do recommend checking it's tbr that out. tuesday we frequently have said there are rules but there are no rules actually <laughs> um so <laughs> we can't we can't be controlled by arbitrary time constraints. Um, and Even again, timestamps. Yeah, they, they exist. You can just skip a dip right on over. Um, for me, I had Hotel of Secrets by Diana Biller. Um, mm. I read her two previous books. You've read Brightest Star in Paris before. Um, mm-hmm. And then I read that one and The Widow of Rose House because I thought they were connected to this. They're not at all Mm -hmm. uh this one has no paranormal elements like those other two i found those two while very well written um and with very cinnamon roll like golden retriever heroes i think that's a part that diana really excels at is like are her heroes um those ones made me sad like deep down sad both of them i just felt sad this one was just fluffy and i love it because there's there's there sure is murder and someone gets (laughs) his brains blown out like oh down down in this hotel but like fluffiest romance you could ever find um it was so he was a virgin hero he was like a uh per like a state employee for the american government she was in um 
she owns this hotel, the Hotel Volner, um, and someone's like sending out codes is or something. Is it the Hotel of Secrets? Is the hotel? Yes. Is it How did you know? Secrets? How did you know? Uh, it. <laughs> I can't imagine why you knew that. Um, what? Wizardry? Wow. I'm psychic. <laughs> uh, it's in oh, Vienna. No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was another bad reference. <laughs> Who are we? <laughs> if we're not making questionable references. It was um, Monty Python and the Holy Grail for those of you listening if you didn't know. I wish I had some coconuts to just clop together as another. Um, as a side note, one time we got a couple of coconuts to eat them and my dad <laughs> demanded that we give him the co- the halves of the Thank coconut God. shell and he spent the rest of the day <laughs> around and then he took them to work and he kept them Amazing. in his desk at work so that he could <laughs> around the office. Anyway, hotel um, Yes, uh, so basically someone is shipping out uh, secret American codes from this hotel. They've traced them there. Um, this guy, he is not a spy. He has never wanted to be a spy, but they send him off to be a spy, so he's just a very <laughs> bad spy. Um, mm-hmm. And it, the, the best part is kind of like the um, Courtney Milan and Duke who didn't, where he's so scared to tell her that um, that he is the Duke meanwhile this guy tries so hard not to tell anyone he's a spy and he does his damnedest everyone knows he's a spy they knew coming in (laughs) so like and he has no clue that they know Uh, i thought that was very fun um the comment that i made in my goodreads review that got a lot of people was he cites his sources during sex because of course he has to look at erotic literature um before gearing up to pleasure her and it, and it was course. classic and it was great i had a lot of fun um kidnapping <laughs> love it we do yeah. love a kidnapping it, it the audiobook was fantastic i really liked the narrator the only thing there were a lot of characters um and via audiobook while you're also working was kind of a lot so that's my only note is that maybe have an open brain and a puzzle or something um, that you're not like focusing too hard on while you're listening, but loved it so hard. I do be puzzling. Well, that's good. I have the audio book for I that do one. Mm-hmm. You're you're gonna be in for a treat. I think you're gonna really like it. Um, oh, I would definitely um, read that. Noted. Well, I read books two and three of Tessa Dare's yes, uh, "Girl Meets Duke" mm-hmm. series. Pleasantly mm-hmm. surprised by the third guy not being a duke, but just duke. I um, love that man. Mm. That's my favorite in this So series. here's my... So two was the governess game, three is the wallflower wager. I read them because I was trying to get to the wallflower wager. The hedgehog. Because the hedgehog, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I ended up... Like, I... All, both of them were four stars. It was It's mm-hmm. Tessa Dare, so it's very charming. She, so far, has not impressed me as, like, one of my favorite authors, but one that, like, I know mm-hmm. I'll have a good time. You know what I mean? You need to read more. I'm, I, I want your opinions after you read more of her older stuff. Okay. Well, at any rate, but, yeah. I liked The Governor's Game better than The Wallflower Wager. The Wallflower, mm-hmm. I think my problem, uh, and again, four stars. I really enjoyed it. I had a yeah. good time. I think my problem with the Wallflower Wager was that both of them and their backstories and their whole like relationship setup felt very Lisa Claypus to me. Mm. But I like Lisa Claypus' writing style better. And so the whole time mm. I was just like, Mer. but Tom oh, Sutherland, I read was, that. but Harry Rutledge was, but it was like a really oh. similar, like, yeah. Gabriel Duke yeah. was a very similar. Oh yeah, because wasn't and again I really enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I don't know. I, I don't know what it was. It just didn't quite get me the way that mm-hmm. the governess game and even the that's, Duchess deal did. That's how I feel about the Duchess deal. That one, the setup for me, I liked it. I that's the only one I haven't reread out of that series. Um, I listened to the third one the most because it was my favorite, and then book two i've listened at least two times um plus reading the physical copies um that was how i read them the first time um i, sh- I need to go back and reread book one because i think now i'll even i'll like it even more it, i read it really early in my historical romance journey well so um, did i but i really like it I, yeah. like really really early one of my first ones mm-hmm. i think mm-hmm. but parts of that book have like stuck with me Mm-hmm. Even though it was years ago, which is why, like, I don't remember a ton of yeah. it, but I remember enough that I, like, I think I enjoyed it more than 
the, the wall flower my picture. favorite part of the series is the male friendships and you don't get that you get him with a small child in book one um and then you get i think his name is ash because then you get him mm-hmm in book two and then by the end in book three you've got him and whatever the dude's name in book two was going against gabriel and i had and they're birthing a goat together one so i was gonna say Mm. it did single-handedly take it from three Mm. to four stars when Mm -hmm. i got to the goat birthing scene Mm -hmm. that well Mm because i was like especially after reading the governess game which is so funny like i was cracking up constantly (laughs) and then this one was like it was it was fun it was charming but it wasn't as funny Mm-hmm. it was funny but it wasn't as funny and so yeah. i was kind of like yeah. uh, this is like i'm not having as much fun as i did with the other one and then we got to the goat birthing scene and i was like okay <laughs> you got me on this one you've got chase in the corner like <laughs> <laughs> trying not to throw up and ash is like shut up i've had a kid i know how this is gonna go that's horrific i never want to see that again i'm gonna spend the rest of my life trying to forget that and chase is like <laughs> And Gabriel and is Gabriel's like, like God damn it, I'm in love. With up. I, I yeah, yeah, I love him so he's, much. Yeah. So then he has to. He's like, I'm gonna take one for the team and shove my entire arm up this goat. Mm. Yeah. And, and then it's like that. his goat. And then it, he it adopts the goat. goat. Mm. And he names it George because Ash's mm. first name is George, and he hates it. So. It's she so did good. win me with that scene. The ending I also yeah. did like. I don't know that I mm-hmm. loved I Penny's backstory. It just confused me with the way she was written earlier in the book. And then Penny's mm-hmm. backstory mm-hmm. reveal kind of had me going like, interesting. I, mm-hmm. I I would have to reread knowing what her thing is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. to yep. see. But there were times when I was like, I feel like she would have been more hesitant. But, you know, yeah. who am I to say? Um, exactly. But the way that yeah. she handled it in the end ultimately did win me over. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I liked so, the ending of that one better than the governess game, just because I felt like the governess game. It's been a while since I read it, but it just took one, either like it wasn't really a breakup, but like one denial of some like feelings too many. Yeah, it took a little far. while. Yeah. Um, the governess game, I also like. I liked the romance, but I mm-hmm. wouldn't reread it for the romance. It just the I would vibes, like it the, for the, the laughter. Kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it a good. It was just too funny. Mm-hmm. Um, God. And Chase is goddamn hysterical himself. Um, every mm. stupid doll eulogy took I mean, me out. And Mary Jane Rose Wells Jane. doing the voices of those girls. <laughs> Uh, I will never get over every time Rosamond woke him up with just like dropsy. <laughs> so, her, her narration. The plague. I did love it. It reminded me of the uh, evil, not evil, but the hedgehog from the Midsummer Moon yeah. narration. Just oh. Like, borderline yeah. demonic child voice because those mm-hmm. kids are borderline demonic. They also took me out mm-hmm. when they did show up in the Wallflower Wager. They were funny. Yep. Um, yep. Ugh. Anyway, so that that that's all. I just the governess game is just one of the funniest books I've ever read. The Wallflower Wager I didn't like as much, but it was still I a really good time. I can't remember. I had just recently reread the Wallflower Wager because someone on Twitter I think it posted something from like a sex scene, and I was like, wait, what? Because of course it flew my brain, like fled fled. I can speak. It <laughs> fled my brain immediately after I read it the last time. So I had to go and re-experience it. I really like um, barely remember the sex scenes, and I read it. That's where yesterday. I'm at right now. I have no clue. I don't know. There was one by a like a shore, or so, like a stream or something like that. Um, well, that's not a full sex scene. They're just making out. No. In the yeah. Uh, my I loved the uh, fancy of fuck love parrot who that was did take me out in um the. Like a like pleasure a house. And she thought it was yeah. like fancy a fox glove. And he's like, no, he's definitely saying fancy a fuck love. And the lady who owned him previously was um, like a pimp. <laughs> so <laughs> there well, you go. That are. and then all of the other, like all yeah. of her friends also are like, what is, what is she saying? And all of their husbands are like, fancy a fuck love. He's, she's saying fancy fuck love like it's so very obvious that also was a funny bit when it came back in the yeah. epilogue yeah and then um with the sham and like her fake meat 
because she's a vegetarian. I thought that was also lovely. And everyone, because everyone like bakes it and tells her that they're delicious. And then Gabriel comes along. He's like, this is the worst thing I've ever had. And she's <laughs> he like, said, and they're like, your friends are lying to you. <laughs> and they're like, how could you tell her that? She's a delicate flower. He's like, no, she's not. But also they're shitty. And then his like one of his gestures was to have a whole catered meal of um, vegetarian options at a ball. And I thought that was lovely. Again, so much about Tessa Dare, but I I do love her. I really like her writing. I don't really compare her to Lisa Clay, but like I compare her in caliber to me, but like not writing style. So I'll have to think about that when I read her next. Um, because it wasn't like style; it was just the like those two characters, the were, the character styles, yeah, were very clay. But it, it, they, it like mm-hmm. they struck me as very. Penny was very uh, like Helen or Cassandra esque. Yeah. Like a little bit quieter, yeah. Helen, a little quirky. I could see because she's, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. and then he was very like bootstraps, mm-hmm. out for revenge. It what really did it for me was when he drags her through like the rough part of town and shows her like here is that's, where I like that's the them. one. What? Then and they just fuck in the they they fuck in the streets and that's oh the they scene do fuck that, in an alley that's true. that that's the scene that got me to reread it. <laughs> there okay. we are. Well, he drags her through and is like, here's like a door that, you you know, you can take shelter in from the cold when you're yeah. freezing and dying. And he yeah. like takes her through basically this like yeah. horrific childhood like, that he had on the streets. Yep. And the whole time I was like, this is like big Tom Severin energy, but I like mm-hmm. Tom Severin better. Mm. I'll have to, I have, it's been a while since I read Chasing Cassandra. Um, I distinctly had remembered that street fucking scene because well, the alley <laughs> fucking i guess um and then i couldn't remember which book it was and it was, then i just yeah. forgot it because it happened it happens a lot and then um on twitter someone had uh taken the screenshot from kindle and i was like aha this is what i've been waiting for and immediately ditched my tbr got the audiobook because i had purchased it from chirp when it was on sale and had a fabulous tuesday night it was it was it was a good scene Mm. Tessa and her class differences again any duchess will do railing her each thrust is a different courtesy title he's got <laughs> just to show how different Oh, her brain sometimes <laughs> okay well I have much to think about <laughs> <laughs> after reliving those memories um, in a completely different direction i read night of the living queers uh 13 tales of terror and delight which is horror um and that's not really a genre that i read but again i love a good anthology for like discovering authors and i do love a good spooky time um it was oh there were some that were just so cute some were true horror and i was like oh my fucking god what is happening it was a lot but I had a really good time. Um, you can like read my review for the ones like my favorites of them. Um, but they all revolved around like the blue moon. So it was like Halloween. And then even further, it was like the blue moon. So then there was a lot of like um, folklore and like mythology around like what happens on a blue moon. Um, and I will definitely be reading it around Halloween. I don't know if I'm strong enough mm. to read the entire thing on <laughs> Halloween because I'm a wimp. Like I am so weak. Um, there, the ones that were my favorite were not unsurprisingly like the lighter ones. Um, but there were some that were, cause they were really short. So they weren't like very long. So like some of them had like fucky endings. I was like, Oh my fucking God, if that happened to me, um, I recommend it a lot. It was read now, um, from when, from Wednesday books on neck alley. And I was like, I love the cover. I need it. And I had a really good time. So I recommend it for a good Goosebumps comp or maybe more Fear, Fear Street than Goosebumps because um, I did love those growing up. So um, it gave me those vibes. I I don't really do horror, so. Yeah. I, yeah. I believe I ha- you. I guess I dabble. I'm a dabbler. I couldn't read Goosebumps as a child. Mm. I didn't read I- – as a kid, I didn't read them as a young adult – um, I think I started with Goosebumps and then I bumped it up a little bit to Fear Street. Um, and I 
sure had nightmares, but, you know, who's to say? I mean, I had nightmares about the mummy and Scooby-Doo asking for a coin, coin, and I thought I was going to be petrified in my grandma's bedroom, so. Oh. (laughs) Well, on the flip side, I once had a nightmare about the Phantom of the Opera, so. (laughs) Actually, a fun fact about me is that I can't sleep with the door open. Like yeah, all no. doors have yeah. to be closed, which yeah, just makes doors sense to me now as an adult. Um, I just mm-hmm. like having doors closed because privacy. But as a child, initially, I could sleep with the door open because like it didn't. Mm-hmm. Why did it matter to me? Um, until gotcha. my parents are convinced they've never watched the like Phantom of the Opera movie, but we must mm-hmm. have because I I distinctly remember like seeing <laughs> scenes from the movie. Yeah. Because at that point in my life, I wasn't familiar with the Phantom of the Opera, mm-hmm. so I must have seen some part of this movie. At any rate, you're such I, a classics kid that you had nightmares about a movie. I did have a nightmare where it wasn't like a full on nightmare, but I the only thing I remember was that the Phantom of the Opera was standing in my doorway, and from that point forward, I had to have the door closed. Um. Oh God. And years later, the 25th anniversary uh, at Albert Hall recorded version came out, and mm-hmm. that's one of my favorite things. And it's the the version that I listen to, and I simply adore Phantom of the Opera. Um, this says so much about you, and I but love I did it. once have a nightmare about it. <laughs> that's um, so funny. This all makes sense. Anyway, well, thank you for that tidbit. Completely unrelated to that, <laughs> another book. <laughs> Another book that I read <laughs> is Anna Maria and the Fox uh, by Liana De La My Lilla. wife. Rosa. My wife. Yeah. I so my respect. Wife. I can see this as being a book that maybe doesn't work for everybody. Yeah, um, I was there. I I see that too. It was a lot slower in the beginning. It's really slow burn and it's really yeah. external plot heavy, which like yeah. I really enjoyed. Mm-hmm. Because I totally vibe with the, like, historical political stuff. Yeah. I can see why somebody who's, like, strict heavy Me. romance only <laughs> would be annoyed. Yeah. Yeah. I had a great time. And yeah. also the fact that it's so external plot heavy means that, number one, there was a lot of time where they just got to, like, have philosophical debates, which made my little heart happy. Because my number one complaint with other romance novels a lot of the time mm-hmm. is that they didn't have time to get to know each other. like And fall in love just- that quickly. I agree. Right. I'm like, yeah. they didn't have a conversation. Like, I wanted them yep. to have at least yep. a couple of conversations. And this one, yep. they had so many conversations that were, like, yeah. really intense philosophical political debates that I was like, oh, you're in love. Stop. <laughs> That's Stop. dirty talk. And then they spent so much time doing that that then ultimately when he was like, (laughs) oh, dang it. Spoilers. Wait, go back. (laughs) I will edit that out. (laughs) They spent so much time talking that ultimately when a marriage of convenience comes up through plot things, (laughs) you don't have to like spend a lot of time being like, no, I can't marry no. you. Like, I only no. want to admit blah, blah, blah. It's just like you're already in love. And then you don't have a ton yeah. of like, there's not really a breakup. It's an external conflict. Yep. yep. Which yep, I yep. appreciated because it was just like, let's go to town on these politics. And I was like, go off. Let's and do let's it. let's go to town on the marital bed. On the marital uh, bed. They did indeed. And I respect that. They did. It was good. Um... I agree with everything that you said. No, no, it was quite charming. Um, also, very excited mm-hmm. for the other. I sisters. think book two, book two screams setup that I love. You know, it which just one is book two? Really, you know, I'm saying this, and I remember <laughs> that I was excited for book two. That's valid. It's like he's like I he's just, like a I like just he owns land close. He's like the guy's friend and the one sister. Um, oh, it's serious than have- Isabel. Yeah, Isn't it? well, the you, quiet sister. I, the, I, I think it's so. been a long time. All I remember is that he's some nobleman, and there's like an enemies ish situation or like adversaries in some. Yeah, well, both place. of the sisters have been set up with adversaries. So Isabel yes. and Sirius is the one, but we don't know why they're adversaries. And she's also mm-hmm. like, you'll see when you read it. So no spoilers for the listener, not for you. Obviously, you've yes. read it, but like, she's. <laughs> 
she's got Honestly, something point, going on. Yeah, that even oh, Anna Maria doesn't like know what you're it is. right. You're right. You're right. Again, I'm not saying like, it. She's, I'm just saying you're right. Now, I'm yeah, she's everything. doing something, and you never uh, really find and then out he, what. And the two of them have yeah. interacted, but we haven't seen it because of it. Yeah. Um. Because there was the, I think there was the preview at the, like the first chapter. Oh, I didn't read it. If there was, I think I did. So I know a little bit. Um, it's all coming back to me now. Thank you. Uh, all sh- coming sh- back I was gonna say thank you, Cher. <laughs> is that Cher? That's Cher, right? Uh, is it? Who knows? Or is I it Celine know. Dion? It's oh, the- it's Celine Dion. It's okay. Celine Dion. Yep. Look at you. Good job. The other C. Um. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the other C. <laughs> You're the other C. <laughs> oh. The other other C. The C D, if you will. Um, um We've been talking too long. Yeah, okay, 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 okay. Uh quickly, I read a Dash of Salt and Pepper by uh Costco Jackson. I really enjoyed it. The audiobook was very fun. Um I had like a few gripes with the ending, but overall I really enjoyed the writing and it was very funny. Um and I am just all for food content. So give me all the food content in your books and I will have a great time listening to it. Um, there was just some weird, like, not really plot holes, but just some things in the writing style that were odd. Like, I didn't know if they'd had sex before. So, like, they, like, started dating. And then it, like, time jumped, like, three months. But I don't think they had had sex in that time. But it was so vague that I don't know if they had. And then they just, like, did it in Logan's car. And, like... Oh. And I think that was the first time because it seemed like it, but it was intense. And I was like, whoa, what is happening? It was like a, just a very, uh, there's some very odd plot things of how they were conveyed to us that were like confusing. But overall, I liked it. Um, there was, like I said, a hot daddy chef. So you can't really go wrong in that department. Back to True. you. C. Um, well, I also <laughs> also read a queer MM, but this one was historical. Mm-hmm. The Secret Lives mm-hmm. of Country Gentlemen by KJ yes, Charles. I'm excited for that one. Banger. This is another one that kind of similarly to, although a little bit similarly to Anne Marie and the Fox, is like a, a healthy dose of external plot. Mm hmm. And mm-hmm. what that means for the relationship is that it like, gets off to kind of a rocky start because the premise for this one is that they're uh, class difference. He's a worker from – or one of them is a worker from Kent and the other one is uh, like a gentleman's son in London and mm-hmm. they have been having this anonymous affair. They refer to each other as London and Kent. Amazing. Um, and after a few – like they, they've been hooking up for a while and Kent is like, hey, I've got to like go back to Kent – and I'm not going to be back for a few months, but, like, if you tell me your name, I can, like, shoot you a note when I'm back in town and we could maybe hook up. And uh, the mm-hmm. London, what's his name? Gareth is very upset. For various reasons in his backstory, he doesn't like to be left. And so he reacts really uh. badly to that and assumes that, like, he he would be left on the hook and he would never write to him. And gotcha. it would be so they have this, like, bad falling out. And then a couple days later, his estranged father dies and leaves him this land in Kent. Um, and this place i can't remember what nice. the name of the place actually is but it's known as the marsh um nice. and when he gets there he's become a baron and inherited this land and his father's other daughter with his other family has been left nothing and it's all been left to him and his father's like the white like dead wife's sister who ultimately became his mistress is also there it's a whole thing it's a lovely God little bless. like found family situation yes. um but so he's yeah. in the marsh and it turns out in the marsh it's like marsh. a smuggling it's a smuggling oh. town um and so <laughs> like nobody really pays attention to the law because the smugglers are in charge specifically in this part of the marsh it's um the doomsday clan are the ones in charge, and who should be the patriarch of the Doomsday Clan oh, but the man thanks. he was hooking up with. And Thank you, Jesus. the thing about that is that he initially accidentally, it has to do with like the guy that his sister is courting, but he basically tattles mm. because one night he sees <laughs> um, a woman in trousers is one of the smugglers, and he kind of recognizes her, and it turns out she's like the sister 
of gotcha. Kent, but he hasn't met Kent in person yet, so he doesn't know <laughs> that he's a doomsday. And so he takes the sister, or he's like a witness for the sister in court, and he's Uh-oh. going to accuse her of smuggling and who oh, should show bad. up, but Joss oh, Doomsday. No. And he basically like doesn't outright threaten him, but kind of implies with his eyes in there in court in front of everyone that love he hot can, like, eyes. He can out him. Like he can tell everyone. Oh. So he has to like retract and be like, just kidding, I made a mistake. And so they have a rough start. But then once they get past that, um, they have like a couple of fights, but there's like really good communication and they just talk through it and like Aww. They don't stay angry at each I'm other so for very excited. long. And most of that book is like external plot and mysteries because somebody's like bla- trying to attack him and his mm-hmm. father might have been involved in smuggling. And there's like a missing dead guy and there's family oh, drama in the smuggler family. So it's like a lot of mystery and smuggling clan politics and other things. And also it's very steamy and these guys are falling in love as you do. Yeah. So really, I, it was just a good time. I love The Thief of the Night um, by KJ yeah. Carl, so I'm super excited. And if any of y'all listeners out there have scribbed, that's where I'm listening to it on. Um, I'm not currently, but I looked, and they have it because the library holds are astronomical. Um, so Scribd has it. I don't know. So there you go. The one thing I will say factor, about but- the – audiobook for the secret lives of country gentlemen i did kind of get past it and after a little while but the the narrator is very like stilting i don't mm. know like yeah okay takes a lot of pauses in the middle of sentences and so it's like very weird kind of jarring to listen to he does a good mm-hmm. job with like the accents and mm-hmm. the, like the performance it's just that he does that and at first i thought maybe it was just like jo- i mean um gareth's like pov but no it was just it was just the whole it was everyone it was the whole time so that was a little bit annoying um i didn't love yeah but i got past it we built a bridge and got over it into the marsh (laughs) into the marsh (laughs) it also has a super dramatic third act i love a dramatic external third act with the various kidnappings and life threatenings and such. Mm. Kidnapping. Nothing gets us going like kidnapping. Really doesn't. No. Anyway. Over to you. Um, with the weather. <laughs> well, the weather is... I don't know. I can't think of anything quippy. So sorry. Uh, <laughs> I read um, <laughs> My Sister's <laughs> Big Fat Indian Wedding. <laughs> By Sashini Patel. It's a YA romance. Actually, I think it's just more like a YA story. The romance was like very, uh, it was very cute, but it it was like pretty um, side plot. Um, Mm. Basically, her sister's just getting married and she is the main um, heroine is a an extremely good violinist and she's got auditions for like Juilliard and like all this well she's got rejected from Juilliard at the beginning of the book and then there's this like competition that would get her before uh, someone from Juilliard so uh, that's her whole motivating focus but lo and behold that happens during the wedding and then the cousin of someone in the groom's party um, he comes to America and um, he is also looking to enter this competition he's a singer um, and there were no embarrassing words sung in this audiobook. Love that for me. Um, because they do end up doing a duet um, at the wedding and stuff. They actually just do a lot of like classic rock. So we already knew those lyrics. Uh, Dream on. It was it was really good. I, I want to listen. Like I wish they had like a, an accompanying soundtrack. Mm. Um, I love the movie My Big Fat Creek Wedding. Uh, so I was – predisposed to love this um and it was very cute and i just love like a good big family Mm -hmm. um and just the chaos that ensues um and again i've said it before i love reading ya romance because i have already been to college i've already (laughs) gone through acceptance i don't like that's not a stress in my life so while like like adult contemporary they're like jobless or they don't have money and health care is expensive and all of this shit that's real life struggles 
Uh, for me, YA is just a lovely escape because I've passed all that and I can just look back with fondness rather than stress sweat. So that that's a ringing endorsement if I've ever heard one. Did not. You won't get stress sweat. sweat. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, one that did cause mild stress sweat, for me anyway, is uh, Beverly Jenkins. Beverly Jenkins causes oh. stress sweat, but specifically yes. she causes stress tears for me. Because she yeah. will just casually, th- not casually, not casually, but she will throw into her plots like the most horrific injustices. Yeah. Because, you know, horrific injustices were committed. But she'll yeah. throw them in there and I'll be like, oh, cool. I came for the romance, and here I am being emotionally devastated. Anyway, I read Rebel. <laughs> I read Rebel by <laughs> Beverly Jenkins. Um, uh, yeah, it wasn't, like, my favorite of... I have yet to read a bad Beverly yeah. Jenkins, to be clear. I don't think I've rated one yeah. below four stars. Um, so this one was not one of my favorites, particularly because I read... Did I mention Indigo? No, I was just going to ask you this? after this. So... No, so you can talk about this, and then we'll segue into. What was the first book I talked about? No, I must have started with. Oh no, I went from a wicked game to Marble Marquee. Okay, yeah, we'll come back to Indigo then, because that's because I want to know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyway, hang on. So Rebel, (laughs) not one of my favorites, especially because I had read Indigo earlier this month. Mm -hmm. Um, I just like the romance wasn't quite as. Like, she can write a really top-tier swoony romance, and this one didn't quite do it for me the way that some other ones have. Um, The plot outside of that was just as good as it always is. Um, Yeah, what? I can't hear a single thing you're saying. Intermission. Hannah, when you listen back to this, I want you to know that I'm eating M&Ms, because I have no idea what's going on. We do be crunching. Oh, you have a cord. That's fun. Can you hear me now? Yes. I think I had accidentally muted and I didn't realize uh, I needed a cord. <laughs> so. Got it. I'm excited to listen to that. I left you a fun little note for when you. <laughs> Thank you. Go to edit. Thank um, you. Thank you. Anyway. Rebel. Rebel. Yeah, I don't remember what I was saying when I left off. Oh, the external uh, plot just, outside of that yeah. was very good. Um as it always is also emotionally devastating. This one, she has a fiancé already, but it's not what you think. Um, Mm -hmm. And it's definitely not a love match. But she's in New Orleans to teach newly freed people. Uh, Mm -hmm. And she's been having some trouble with that because there's a lot of people in New Orleans and there's a lot of people not happy about said people being freed. Um, And he is part of the classic Levesque family which is Mm. a lot of fun and in this iteration is just a bunch of hot men that are all brothers and they have a fun mom so (laughs) he's really having the the time of his life um and also as you know because Mm. we discussed Mm -hmm. this Beverly Jenkins deals with villains the way that nobody else does truly her commitment to just being like these are evil people and mm-hmm. they will not be getting redemption. However, they will be getting eaten by wild animals or sold into slavery. Yes. I respect that commitment so much. Um, I've also, in the few that I've read, she even like deals with minor villains or like sub villains yeah. to the min- like the main villains. And like she'll just take them out too. And I'm like, I respect that so well, hard. So this one, I will say there's one guy that doesn't get dealt with really sufficiently i don't think at the end but it doesn't like it doesn't really bother Mm -hmm. it was fine the one guy he was like kind of a minor villain in that he wasn't an antagonist to them but he gotcha it was like the hero's housekeeper i want to say or like a woman who worked for him her son was murdered in front of his wife and child by this former slave owner Mm -hmm. Uh, and they threw his body in a swamp and was really awful about it. And mm-hmm. so in the middle of the night, five hooded men showed up, put a sack over his head, gagged him, threw him in the like tied him up, threw him in the back of a wagon, mm-hmm. and then shoved him in a canoe and were like, There's a knife somewhere in this boat. 
if you have time to find it before the boat that we've punctured holes in sinks and before and the, the gators, gators get to you. Yeah. Good luck. And he grabs the knife, but he's so excited to get the knife that he knocks the boat over and then he gets death rolled by gators. Ah. Uh, so, and that's not even like really a spoiler because it happens fairly early on in the book. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not a spoiler. That's just amazing. But basically, they just they're like they know that justice is not gonna get served. Like, yeah. yeah, the witness. There were no white witnesses and black witnesses aren't allowed to testify. Like, the mm-hmm. people in power don't want to charge him with anything anyway. So they were like, fine. <laughs> Looks like he's getting eaten by gators. <laughs> like, and I salute. I, I salute as well because you've read. To Catch a Raven, right? No. No. Oh, okay. Well, I appreciated how that villain was dealt with as well. I do love a good... Yeah, so there's two earlier ones. Well, so Indigo. Uh, and Through the Storm. They both mm-hmm. sell their villains into slavery. Like, I want to say in, like, Africa or something. Which... Yep. <laughs> they're like, we'll see how they like it. Indigo popped off. Indigo was basically like a billionaire historical romance because he was just a rich dude who wanted to take care of her. He bought her so much stuff and she was so annoyed with him. She was like, please stop buying me things. And he was like, but what if instead of doing that, I filled your house with crates of food? And she was like, I can't even eat all of this. Like, I'm going to have to donate it. And he's like, I'm going to continue to buy you things. And also you're going to marry me. And he did kind of force her hand. By making a spectacle of her. But it's fine. Everything is fine. The premise of Indigo is that she was born into slavery, um, but ended up getting, like, rescued from it, essentially. It was a, like, there were letters sent between, like, her father and her aunt who was in the north, and they had somebody go find her. They had, like, severed part of her pinky as a baby so that they could find her. Oh, God. Um, gotcha. Her hands and feet are Indigo from, I can't remember what it was, but they were doing something probably like making indigo die or something like that with their initially mm-hmm. with their feet and with their hands that would permanently like for the rest of their lives stay in their hands purple oh my god um mm-hmm. and feet so she still has like she wears gloves all the time because her hands are indigo anyway she lives in the north now and she like has her own house because her aunt's left it to her and stuff but she's on like basically the underground railroad like they have she has a cellar where she can hide people and they have all these systems and they bring in somebody at the beginning of the novel who, like, they were attacked. And this guy is super beat up and has to recover in her cellar. And it turns out he's the Black Daniel, one of the most famous slave stealers in the Union. So he, like, steals people out of slavery. And he's super hot. And he's super rich, but she doesn't know that. Hot. Um, and then he buys the property next to her in the fancy house, and he's mm. just, like, really determined eventually to marry her. Oh this book is also the reason that I have started putting maple syrup in my coffee sometimes as is a sweetener. A well, I don't know, but she does. And so it's a running bit Ooh. in the book that, like, when he's recovering, she puts maple syrup. Like, she doesn't have sugar, but she puts maple syrup in his coffee as a sweetener. And so then periodically mm. his friends and housekeepers and stuff will be like, oh, I heard he's developed a taste for putting maple syrup in his coffee as a way to be like, he's obsessed with you. He's obsessed with you. He won't shut up about you. Like, he is in love with you. Um, and it's quite tasty. But he's obsessed with her and he buys her stuff all the time. Yep. Okay, I'm sold. Anything edible? Um, <laughs> yeah. That that's jumped up the uh, the old TBR. I can't remember how the villains were. Oh, I just said they were slavery. Duh. Um, well, but there's like yeah. some secondary. It's kind of a mystery. Like there's a traitor mm-hmm. in their midst, but they're not sure who it is. And also, she has like an ex-fiance who they were supposed to get married, but he comes back married. Uh, yeah, and then this guy has moved in. There's this white dude sniffing around because he's trying to like. This is pre-Civil War, so there's still – the Mm. Fugitive Slave Act is still going on. So there's lots of stuff going on there. Um, It's a lot. It's very emotional, obviously. But Mm -hmm. damn, I had such a good time with Hester. And uh, what is his name? I don't know. I think he's a Levesque, too. I will say the audiobook for this one wasn't great. Most of Beverly's audiobooks are done by Kim Staunton. 
who was mm-hmm. really good. But this one, I guess it must have been like really early or something. So it was somebody else and she mm. wasn't great. Um, which was Sad. a bummer. <laughs> I know. It's fine. Know. It's fine. I won't cry. Anyway, so those are my favorite. Um, really and then Through the Storm is the one amazing. where the villain gets eaten by a bobcat and then the bobcat dies. Yes. Oh. Just marvelous, really. <laughs> yeah. I just love historical romance just so much <laughs> yeah because mm. what contemporary mm. could have the villain get eaten by a bobcat or gators uh, sh- none sure not one that i want to read um on a very light and fluffy tangent um i reread lady meets earl by christy carlisle because i read this during the harper collins strike and lord knows that i did not remember much about this um and so when my review said i will review after the harper collins strike well that was a lie because i couldn't review it and i also just wanted to read it again because it was like five stars then and it's five stars now but i wanted to know why Uh, i have a few that are like that and someone uh recently was like can you explain why like you said you would review after the strike and i'm like i'm so sorry but i i have no clue (laughs) You should have written the review, but just not posted it. I see, if I don't write it immediately, I, I should have. I know I should have, uh, but I, I didn't. I get there's really no excuse. Yeah, I started. That's like I, relatable. Like the first few I did, and then I just I just couldn't, and then I yeah, unfortunately. Oh, it was like a it was a Lorraine Heath that I didn't have. Oh yeah, it was one that I really disliked. Who who knows? Uh, this one though. <laughs> um truly light truly fluffy no third act breakup not even the parents were terrible mind you okay so you you know this one just had like his parents were killed in a train accident but they were lovely they weren't terrible they were just dead they were they weren't terrible they were just dead and her parents like they were lovely to her they wanted her to have a choice in who she married and the father was great so you didn't even have the angst of a terrible dead father. You just had a poor, sad, emotional hero because his parents died in a train wreck and so then riding trains Their is hard for parents him. were dead. No. <laughs> Are dead. It's a Frozen 2 quote. Let's move forward. Oh. <laughs> um, so yeah, like, if you liked One Duke Down by Anna Bennett, if you liked How to Be a Wildflower by Eloisa James, I think you would like this one. Again, um... I can see why people would be like, this is a very boring book. But for me, it was a very good book. Uh, was it completely memorable? No. But I remember how my heart felt. And that's enough. Um, <laughs> again, Ramshackle Cottages, they do the work. They do. That That's all I got on that front. <laughs> it's a lovely cover, too. If you're going to buy one. There you have it. Uh, speaking of pretty light and fluffy, I read uh, Talk Sweetly to Me by Courtney Milan. Ooh. This is a novella that it's like the uh, it's, I think she calls it the coda to some series that I haven't read. Mm. But mm-hmm. um, I, don't, I read it and it seemed fine as a standalone. So I don't know like what characters are from the gotcha. other series, but seemed good to me. Yeah. Um, for the most part, pretty light, pretty sweet. There was a little bit of relationship. Like, there was a little bit of a breakup. They were never uh, technically together um, mm-hmm. until the end. And there was some heavy content warnings for... How do I want to phrase this? Like, racial discrimination. The heroine is black. Mm. And her mm-hmm. sister is also black. And her sister is pregnant. And she's living with her sister. And her sister's husband is away. And he won't be back for another few weeks. And they think that he's got plenty of time to be back before the baby arrives. But the baby seems to be coming early. So oh. the plot line here is that the doctor is white. The doctor. Okay. Yeah. And so there's a lot of, like, he's really nasty to them and will only talk to the white servant. But, like, initially it just kind of seems like he might be just kind of brusque. But he basically, mm-hmm. like, repeatedly, it- she's like, hey, I'm having contractions. And he's like, it's oh, false no. labor pains. Like, 
And so he, like, repeatedly brushes her off to the point where, like, the baby is being born breech and he's not there because Jesus. he's, like, she's lying. Yeah. I've dealt with women like her before and it becomes very apparent what he means by women like her. So basically the entire mm-hmm. thing is that he accuses her of lying and being attention-seeking and awful and they end up delivering mm-hmm. the baby without him um, because he's the worst. So there is that. Um, otherwise, the romance is between her. She is um, a computer for like she's really into astronomy and she's basically a math genius i thought you meant an electronical computer i was like no, oh wow she's a person who computes <laughs> okay she I got it I like got works eventually. for an astronomer um and she's like a math genius but she's super shy doesn't like talking to other mm-hmm. people and they are neighbors with this <laughs> very outrageous irish man uh, who writes novels and he writes a newspaper column from Stephen Shaughnessy, actual man, where he basically like answers women's questions in this very like outrageous way. Romance or TBR, actual podcast. Actually, are we? Yeah. Um, are we just no. an incredibly long voice note you send to your friend <laughs> <laughs> and they're burdened yes. with it? Yes, we are. Um, <laughs> Anyway, but he he's like this rake, um, but he doesn't like he's not a malicious rake. It's more like <laughs> women just know that he's outrageous, so women want to like he's skillful sleep with him. and delicious. He is skillful and delicious, but he <laughs> so he has this reputation. But he's like obsessed with her. He like adores her to the point where like most of the time when she starts talking about like astronomy and math and all these crap, I don't even know. I don't know. She starts talking math, and I'm like, none of these words are words. But he, like, genuinely is so invested and wants to hear everything that she has to say and, like, encourages her to talk Mm -hmm. about it. And so his whole thing is – her name is Rose Sweetly, and so he all the time is like, talk sweetly to me. Like, I want to hear whatever. And he ends up Mm. going on out of his way. He, like, lies to the guy in charge of the uh, observatory and says that he's writing a book about an astronomer, so he's hoping that someone can give him lessons just to, like – finagle his way into having some mostly alone but chaperone time with her where she teaches him math and stuff and then they watch an astronomical event together and like i said there's like a slight yeah. breakup but it's nothing crazy and they do get over it so it's fine it was just like really adorable and there was a lot of math which normally i hate math but he was so into it Damn. he was just obsessed with her I love people's passion for math, like in a perfect equation. I love the passion. I simply don't understand it. But yeah, I, love I don't it. know what's going on, but she gets really into it, and he's really into her being really into it. So nice. Nice. I like that. I like that laugh. Um. <laughs> How many references can we have in this, this episode? That are so. That are so. <laughs> um uh my last book that i'd recommend uh is well it's a it's a plague to recommend but it's it happened one fight by marine lee lanker and it's an arc um and it takes place in the 1930s there are two like black and white film stars um so i do have a soft spot for like black and white movies and obviously this one is a play on it happened one night um which is one of my favorite black and white movies um and so there was a lovely so they are the two um I, someone said it was like Joan Crawford and Clark Gable and then um I believe one of the side characters was like a Cary Grant esque guy hot um yeah I know um so basically they are like the the it uh actors of the time. And the way the author framed it is that they, like, starred in, like, all of the big movies. So, like, you had It Happened One Night, which did not star, you know, Jerome Crawford. But, like, it's, like, framed as these people were, like, in all of those, like, iconic movies. Mm. Um, so then they referenced that movie, but in with a different name. And then in the movie um, – have you seen it? Nope. Um she he's a newspaper reporter she's like an heiress she runs away there's a train he finds her on this train he's like writing his article um she's trying to get out from probably a marriage who knows um and along this journey this road trip they end up in this 
the hotel motel cottage situation pretending to be married um and they put up a sheet in between the two beds to like you know have modesty but then there's like tension and then like in one scene they like rip down the sheet and they have love um and so (laughs) make love have love i don't know love scene um how they called it in the book so that was like like shadowed mirrored in the book um uh, all long story short um i actually really enjoyed the first 75 percent of it um i loved the writing i loved the, the characters i thought it was really interesting um it's not a time period that i normally read in historical so i thought it was really cool in that sense it felt really modern though like the writing felt like it could be like a modern day book with just like different profession um but I didn't care. That no, that doesn't really take me out of a story. Um, but you knew where the breakup was going to go because there's like a reporter who loves to blackmail. And we know my anti-kinks are self-sacrifice and blackmail. Um, so the ending was quite cruel. <laughs> and um, there was a lot of forgiveness. Again, more than saying sorry. And... Um, it took the rating down to three and a half stars and I rounded down because I am still pissed off about it. But as a whole, I would recommend the book because it was different. And especially if you like black and white movies, I think you'd have a really good time with it. Um, but yeah, that third act was brutal and I won't recover. But if you're into a really angsty time, like going forward, cause they had, um, went on a date and then she thought it was all set up and then, they had to star together for the next like five years and then she's getting married. But then um, they had started a movie um, about marriage in, in the past. And he's for the last five years, like pranking her and all of that. And um, he, they long story short, they're accidentally married. They got, they got to work together until it gets. Involved. Wow. I did a terrible way of describing that. I think it's all in the summary. <laughs> Um, I, it was really, it was a really fun, it wasn't even like a marriage of convenience. It was just like, oops, we're married and now we have to go to Vegas for six weeks to get it annulled. There's so many accidental marriages in romance. Mm -hmm. How many times do you think people accidentally get married in real life? Not enough in my life. Honestly, that's, you know, I could use a little, I don't know, (laughs) zhuzh in my life, zhuzh it up. I got into a fight with my parents over the word zhuzh. <laughs> zhuzh? How would you... Was it, what was it about? They don't believe it's a real word. Oh. I was like, you know, like, zhuzh it up. And they were like, that's not a thing. And I was like, yeah, I guarantee bangs. you that it is. Mm-hmm. And I spelled it for them. And I knew that it was How specifically would you because it? I had just... It's like T-H-U-J... I can't... Inter- I've never seen it. Spelled. No, that's, that's not it. T... I cannot, off the top of my head, tell you, but I can tell you that the word judge comes up a lot in Camila Knows Best, um, huh. and I had just read that, and so I was like, I literally, like, the word judge, mm-hmm. this is how you spell it, this is, and they were like, that's not a real word, and to this day, they don't believe that it's a real word. They were like, well, I've never heard that, so maybe it's a your generation thing, and I was like, I promise you it's not a generational thing, it's just that you apparently are <laughs> refusing to acknowledge that you know this word. It's it's one of the words that I would never know how to even Google to how to spell because I wouldn't know how to spell it. Um, sure. But like, I but it's a word. It's validity. Yes. You yes, zhuzh yes. things up anyway. You zhuzh. Um, well, speaking of high angst, the last one that I re- – well, it's not the last chronologically one that I read, but the last yeah. one that I have to recommend today – five stars to the lucky just kidding we're talking about that next week oh i don't have any books <laughs> <laughs> no more books i was that so was ready to the, talk the, the <laughs> cock blockiest move you could have ever performed <laughs> i am locked no. out of that Close even... the door right in my face <laughs> like, five stars tell... to the hook <laughs> not even gonna tell y'all what book it is. i've been like... cuckolded <laughs> If y'all follow my reading tracker, you'll know. Um, I know what but, it is um, now. Uh, yeah, I but also, <laughs> if you want to know what the angsty five stars goes to, you you'll have to know. tune in next week for our St. Patrick's mm-hmm. Day episode. Yes. Actually, not next week. This week, since it's TV Oh, just Tuesday. kidding. Next Later episode. This week. 
um, this because yeah, my last two books were also included in that episode, so I won't talk about them. And I'm we'll I think I, I if if I have time, I want to read the one that you're talking about, but I don't know if I will. Um, I don't know if you would like it. You might hate it, but oh it was God. okay deeply horny. So I did love your story about how it was just so horny. It was so horny. <laughs> we'll talk about it on Friday. Wow, that was a horny book. I did not see it coming. It was shocking. Oh my god. I was shocked, if you will. I was like, what chapter is this? It's so early for them to be dirty talking to one another when they haven't even touched. Uh, Tune in later this week beautiful. to find beautiful. out just the horniest book that Caroline read. That's it. That's how I'm getting you to listen. Nothing gets you going like just the horniest book that Caroline's ever read. That's so true. Nothing does. <laughs> okay. Well, I feel like I have to read it, even if I'll hate it, just to understand. That's fair. I like, I like to understand things. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Now I'm like, who narrated it? Because if it's Rosalind Lando, I don't think that it is, but like, <laughs> it would be really funny to me if I was like, yeah, that audiobook was good. <laughs> and then you were like, and then I'm going to kill you. Well, that, that, ha- that happened to me because we were reading another book for our episode and I downloaded, this is a, this is a play in three parts. I downloaded, I hit play. <laughs> I hear Rosalind Landor immediately. And then I return it, and I text it's, you. It's I can't her. read that book. Narrated by Corey James. Thank God. I love you, and Corey James. Not a clue who you are, but... It's available somewhere. I already have it checked out. I got it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I got well, it. Well, then you're good. I am so good, and that book is so horny. As it is. Amazing. Well... We did it. Yeah, this is. This took even longer. Did we do oh, it though? Good because Lord. this is. I know. I know. It won't be quite as long as this time we're seeing because there are bits and bobs edited out. Uh, this may very well be our longest episode. So. God. Well. Um, we you gotta know, stop reading such good books. That that's our that's our issue and so many. But to the one person who was really excited that we had a really long episode was it like the last week or whatever. You're welcome. Yeah, we did this for you, just for you, only for you. Um. And on that note, thank you to everyone who has subscribed to our um, Substack. Yeah, that's I don't know when the thrill. first one's gonna go out. Not a clue. probably relatively soon since we were using it for show notes and stuff. Yes, and we have some fun ideas that we're percolating. Mm. Um, yes. And we'll have to, <laughs> have to discuss those some more. Bubbling in the back um. of our brains. <laughs> uh, <That's>... Anymore? <laughs> no, I was just, the mental image wasn't great for me <laughs> after I said it. <laughs> Basically, you have to imagine an Angelica Frankenstein-esque situation where, like, <laughs> Just imagine a head, but with the top off, and then like nice bubbling like bubbles, a <laughs> like a cauldron inside. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> look! Sometimes my brain, yeah. I say things, and then my brain is like, "What if we put an image to that?" And I'm like, "Well, I wish you wouldn't." And my brain is like, "It's too late. Here it is. I did all this work for you." And I'm like, "I wish you hadn't." Because I can never poke my mind's eye out once I've seen something, you know? Yeah, see, I don't have a mind's eye, but I I did do that when we went on our whole, like, space ocean tangent when I was like, oh, yeah, you're an astronaut s- signing off from the space station, <laughs> which had zero relevance to anything. And for some reason, you saying I'm signing off just <laughs> brought me back to the days where you watched <laughs> space station shit. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay well yeah thanks for subscribing fun things coming your way and uh tune in for tune in to get lucky on friday yeah get lucky with romance or tbr with us um i don't know who else it would be <laughs> with, because 
<laughs> yeah, with us. Who are... <laughs> to clarify, not those <laughs> other romance you TBR. I was, uh, my brain has stopped working. Um, yeah. yeah, it's like yeah. Okay. Um, truthfully, nothing more to say. Just sign off. 